Hey there, Python trainer Ruben Lerner here. Today I want to talk to you about two ideas, immutable and hashable, and how they are similar and related, but also how they are distinct from one another. So when you first learn Python, you learn that we have lists, for example, my list equals 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and I can change my list. I can add a new element, so I can say my list.append of 60. And then sure enough, my list has changed. I can replace an existing element. So I can say my list of, let's say three equals 999. And we see that I've changed my list. And I can remove an element and say my list.pop. And sure enough, then my list has lost its final element there. And all this is normal and reasonable and natural. And the idea of it being a mutable data structure something that I can change feels very natural to us, but it is not the case for all data structures in Python. Strings and tuples are immutable. Once they are created, we cannot change them. So if I say S equals A, B, C, D, F, G, H, I, J, and I say S of zero equals exclamation point, I wanna change this string. Actually, I cannot, I get an error here. Stir object does not support item assignment. So I can't change an element. Can I make a string longer? Well, people think that they can because they say something like S plus equals, uh, let's say uh, K, L, M, N, O, P. And sure enough, S now is a longer string, but I have not, I have not modified the original string. Rather, what I did here was here, you know, we basically said S equals S plus K, L, M, N, O, P, meaning that first we created a new string and then we assign that new string back to the same variable we were using before, s. So it gives the appearance of having changed the string, but we did not really change it. Strings are definitely 100% immutable in Python. And tuples also, tuples are also immutable, meaning that if I say t equals 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and I try to replace an element, it won't let me do that, giving me a similar error message. Tuple object does not support item assignment. And there is no such thing as a pen. There is no such thing as pop. Okay, so we've laid out the groundwork here for mutable versus immutable data structures. Um, and then we get to dictionaries. And we say that dict keys must be immutable. At least this is what I say in my courses. And I make sure to say, well, it's not really immutable, but it's pretty close to that. And we'll just paper over that difference for now. What do I mean by that little aside? And what do I mean that immutable and hashable are not exactly the same? Well, let's take a look. If I say now D equals this empty dictionary, and I say D of S, my string equals 10, will that work? And the answer is yes. Yes, strings are immutable. Strings can be dictionary keys. Fantastic, we're doing great. And then can I say D of T equals 20. Can I create a dictionary key value pair in which a tuple is the key? The answer is yes, absolutely. It's a little weird maybe, but I've definitely done it before. What if I try to say D of my list equals 30? And the answer is no. And I get an error message that's a little weird. It says here, unhashable type list. Now, if really keys had to be immutable, shouldn't it say immutable type list? So we're already starting to see some cracks in this definition of immutable objects can be dictionary keys and mutable objects cannot. So first of all, why? Why would Python have such a rule? And the answer harkens back to how dictionaries work. When I store something in a dictionary, and here I'm simplifying things dramatically, if I say D of A equals 100, basically Python uses the key A as the input to the hash function, which returns an integer telling us where to store the pair. In other words, the key value pair itself, or more specifically, the key tells us where in memory should this key value pair be stored. Again, I'm simplifying things dramatically, but this is basically the case. And I can indeed say hash of A, and hash of A will give me back an integer a very seemingly random integer, but it's not random, it's deterministic. And every time then I want to find out, or if I say A in D, what is Python doing? It's running the hash function 
It's saying hash of A. It's going to that location in memory and checking, hey, is my key value pair here? And if so, it pulls out the value. And if not, again, we can get into more complicated things here, but if not, then it looks around in one or two other places, and then it'll either return success or failure. Fantastic. So that is true if it is hashable. What's wrong with unhashable things and what makes immutable things unhashable? Well, think about it this way. Let's say I were in some parallel universe in which I could modify strings, right? A different version of Python. So if I say here, so uh, let's say E equals A, B, C, D, and I then say D of key equals 999. So what am I going to do here? I'm saying I want to store A, B, C, D, and 999 as a key value pair in my dictionary. Python runs, so Python runs, hash of key, gets a number back, and uses that for storage. Fantastic. But then what if after I do that in our parallel you know, universe, right, we say key of zero equals Z, right? Now, again, I cannot actually do this in Python, but let's say now I've changed that string. It is not a new different string. It is the same string, but it has been modified. It's as if my shirt now had a button replaced. It's the same shirt, but it doesn't contain the same elements that it did before. So then if I were to say hash of key, hash of key, now Python will return a different number, thus losing our key value pair. That is the basic idea here. The reason why mutable data can't be used, although we'll see in a moment we can, can't be used as a dictionary key is because we might lose our keys. <laughs> Don't lose your keys, folks, right? Um, but basically, we might lose our keys in the dictionary because the hash function will no longer return the same values it did before because the key itself has changed. So for that reason, as a general, general rule, we can say that immutable data is hashable. Meaning, if you want to store something as a key in a dictionary, or, by the way, as an element in a set, which is sort of like a dictionary's keys, in both those cases, we need to use immutable data because that is hashable. But there are at least two exceptions, or exceptions in two directions that we can think of. One of which is if I say t equals a tuple, 10, 20, 30, and then I say here 100, 200, 300. Look at that. A list as an element in a tuple. Can I do that? Is that legal? Absolutely 100% legal, totally. And if I say now D of T equals 888, it won't allow me. It won't allow me to do that. And what is it saying here? It's saying it's an unhashable type list. In other words, yes, the tuple is immutable, but it contains mutable data. And that mutable data is unhashable because maybe the list will change, thus changing the result we'll get from the hash function, thus making this key lost in the dictionary. So immutable data, yes, but only if it contains other immutable data. But then things get even weirder. What if I define my own data type? Well, if I say class person, we'll say your def under init, self name, self, self name equals name. And I say now P1 equals person of name one and P2 equals person of name two. And now I want to create a dict in which these person objects are the keys and their, I don't know, ID numbers are the values. A little weird, but fine. Can I do this? So I say D equals P1 100, P2 200. And it works. Wait a second, aren't classes that I create inherently mutable? Yes. So if I say p1.name, I get it. If I say p1.name equals another name, and I say p1.name, look at this, I change the object. It is clearly mutable. And yet if I say d of p1, I get it back. It's fine. So this is a beautiful example of where mutable data is hashable. In fact, this is the biggest hole in that equivalence that I often make with my beginning students, saying that immutable and hashable are the same thing, because clearly here it is not the case. So what's going on? Well, it turns out that there are many, many cases in which it's really useful to have our own objects as elements, as keys, I should say, in a dictionary. And so this is an example of where we need to have mutable data as keys in a dictionary. But, 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 
the things that we can change on our object don't affect the hash value. So if I say hash of P1, we get a value back because our object is hashable. And I can say P1.name equals you know, XYZ, and then hash of P1 is not going to change. Its hash value does not depend on whatever attributes we have there. To be honest, I'm not entirely sure how the hash value is determined, but it's definitely not from that. It's not from the ID of the object either, so far as I can tell, because the ID would be a different number. Okay, so now what? Can we play with the hash value at all for our objects? The answer is actually yes. I can say, let's go back and get my object here. Watch this. I'm now going to say def dunder hash of self. Now, I'm going to warn you right now, what I'm about to do is totally cuckoo and crazy. You should not do it, certainly not at work or at anything that is actually important, but it's kind of fun and instructive. I am here going to have my own result for hash. In other words, if I call hash on a person object, by default, we use the built-in hash function and the method that's used. But if I define my own Dunder hash, this is what will be invoked every time we want to hash our object. And I'm going to say here, return hash of self.name. So if I now say hash of p1, I get back that. And if I say p1.name equals something else, and then I say hash of p1, look at that. Now we get a different number back. You know where I'm going with this, right? Of course, I say d equals p1. 10, P2, 20. And now I say D of P1. By the way, just notice in case it's not obvious, I'm not asking for the string P1. I'm asking for the variable P1, which references our first person object. That's for P1. Fantastic, I get it back. And then I say P1.name equals yet another value. And now I say D of P1. And you know what happens? Bam, it blows up, key error. Because it ran hash of p1, it got back a different number. It turned to the it turned to the dictionary and said, "Find this for me." And the hash function gave us back something else entirely. So, bottom line, what am I trying to say here? First of all, immutable and hashable for most people, most of the time, they do overlap. And I think you can use them, because I do this, so I'm going to give myself an excuse here. I think you can use them pretty much interchangeably with beginning Python users. However, very quickly you discover that even immutable data, like a tuple, that contains mutable data, or shall we say unhashable data, is not hashable. So the tuple remains immutable, but it is unhashable. And the other direction we see that our own classes, even though they are very clearly mutable, are hashable as well. But if we want to mess with that and take advantage of that in Python, we can. Not that I recommend you do so, unless it is on your colleague's computer when they go to make a cup of coffee. And if you do that, you didn't hear it from me. All right, folks, that's enough for now. Please let me know what you think of this video. Like and subscribe, of course. And I'll be back soon with more videos about Python pandas and everything in between. Thanks a lot.